everyone. Welcome back to the Winner's Circle. I'm Derek. And I'm Cody. And we're here. We're going to recap the finale, the Big Brother 25 finale. Now, full disclosure, it's actually been a little bit. It's been about a week since we since the show ended. And there was a couple reasons. One, we were very busy. But more importantly, we wanted to let it all digest. Because regardless of what you thought of this season, okay? And I've had my opinions as well. We, we both have been vocal about wanting the season to end. You have to admit if you're being objective. Cody, that finale episode was pretty good. It was really, really good. I um, I really enjoyed it. There was a couple moments that kind of gave, got me a little choked up. There were a couple moments that kind of gave me the chills. There was intensity with the final two speeches. It was uh, it was a really good finale episode, but I will say it's, you know, we it needed to be a good finale episode because you and I were talking about it constantly. And it was starting to drag. The season was starting to really drag. And I was I was ready for it to be done. And to cap it off with a good finale where, you know, Sari's secret came out. Jag was named winner. Cam won America's favorite. So I got to tell you, there's one thing I do want to say. You picked the winner. I picked America's favorite. I mean, that's a pretty good season for us. I mean, I would like good. if we picked the winners, like if we both did, but. Not bad for guys who don't watch the feeds. Yeah, wait, man. We don't not, know what we're talking about. <laughs> not too shabby. No, I think, and overall, it's not really a secret. Listen, there's if you've played the game before, you know the type of personality that's going to go far. Now, obviously, they're outliers, and we can't predict what type of decisions they're going to make once they get in there. But you can have a general idea of a personality that's going to go well. The the over over the top people, if they are showing that before the show starts and they go in there and do that, they're probably not going to go far. Right. If there's someone who is a little bit awkward socially, if they don't find a way to harness that and have find come off as endearing, they could go home early. Um, but there's things that people do before they go in there. One, they're usually fans of the show. They have some understanding of the show. They don't have to be super fans. And then they have some level of athletic ability or intelligence where if they find themselves in a jam – they can win a competition. And then most importantly, they're just good talkers, right? They're good They're good listeners. And you can hear that in how they deliver their intro packages, right? Like how they are telling you they're going to win or not going to win. Do they appear to be there to actually win or are they there for followers? Mm. You can kind of tell a lot of these things and it's no science. But generally speaking, if someone goes in there with that mindset of like, listen, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to adapt, and they're way able to articulate to, that to us before even playing, usually they're going to be a pretty good communicator with the other house guests, and that usually bodes well for them. But again, I've had bad seasons too. I picked uh, I picked uh, Big Brother Canada. Who did I pick that he got smoked? I can't Hem- remember. Hemsey, how do you say her? her uh, that, that Big Brother Canada season, to, for, to be 100% honest with everybody listening. It's a blur. It's a blur. I don't remember. I couldn't name... I, the, you know what I who I can his name. name his real name's Herman I know that but oh yeah that's right Herman and he was that's car right. salesman he just went too hard but um but yeah we, we, it's uh it's not a science but there's definitely some yeah you can tell characteristics I completely agree with you on the sense of like you can tell the people that are in there to play and there are people that are in there to just like be on TV you know and it comes through during the season and quite frankly it's getting old. Um, when people are there to be characters, cause it's like, if you want to be a character, go on a dating show, go on, um, another one. Like it, the characters that are my favorite are the ones that like understand the show and are still themselves and make that into a character. You know, like they understand the show, they're fans of the show. And now all of a sudden they get a chance to be on TV and their personality kind of like bleeds into being the character of the season. Like I want to say the characters this past season was like Heisem. And he was never planning to be a character. He just was like this big personality that was like brought really a good element to the game. He then ended up getting turned on. And it's like he didn't go in there to be a character. It just ended up happening. You know, he's a fan of the show. So those are the ones that I like to see. And those are the ones that we like get behind. But overall for the season, we had um, – we're only doing two interviews postseason. Mm-hmm. We had Cam and we had Jag. The first interview that we're going to be putting out is with Jag. And talking to him was really, really cool. He had some cool insight uh, into kind of some things that I didn't really fully know about the game. Like I didn't, I liked when he broke down his relationship with Matt. You know, I thought that was pretty yeah. cool to hear that because we're not watching the feeds. We've said it all the time, you know, 
Everybody likes to call us out about it constantly, but we don't Even watch though we the call feeds. ourselves out. Yeah, we call ourselves out, but people like to still tell us like, oh, you don't get it because you don't watch the feeds. It's like, no, 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 you don't get it because you've never played the game. Like that's yeah. why it's like – it's so funny to me when we get into those conversations during the lives where I'm like, I don't need to watch the feeds to know exactly what's going on in this game. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, but you I mean, there's certain the little feeds. nuances we won't pick up on, like maybe certain relationships or what's mm-hmm. going to happen next. But yeah, no, I agree with you. The Jag's interview was pretty deep. He kind of broke it down what was important to him. You guys are going to really like that interview, I think. And Cam's interview was great as well. We're going to break down probably just an overview of the season, but more importantly, the finale night. But before we do that, let's hear from this week's sponsor, and we'll get right back to it. Who's this week's sponsor, Cody? Hit him Un- with it. Uncommon Goods. Uncommon Goods. Here it is. Rolling it. Be right back. If you want to hear, where did you get that this holiday season? Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for your secret Santa or your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they'll want. Here are a few of my favorite gifts that I found. I mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. This is probably my favorite gift, by the way. As a Red Sox fan, as a New Englander, I think the framed pictures of the stadiums are absolutely awesome. They have them from different years as the stadium went through its different progressions. Again, I'm going Fenway Park or Fenway Park if you're from Rhode Island or Massachusetts. The point is, whatever you want, they have the, all the different stadiums, football, baseball, etc. There's plenty to choose from. This is just one of the many gifts that you're going to find on Uncommon Goods that is unique to them. So I really strongly recommend you go check them out. Yeah, and when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $2.5 million to date. So if you guys want to check out Uncommon Goods and get 15% off your next gift, go to UncommonGoods.com slash Winner Circle. That's UncommonGoods.com slash Winner Circle and get 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. That's right. We want to thank Uncommon Goods for sponsoring this week's episode. Let's get back into it. Okay, so we're back. Shout out Uncommon Goods. Guys, we say it all the time. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have the sponsors, and that's what allows us to do these shows. It accommodates for our time, our efforts, the technology we use. This, this, what you're seeing right now costs money. The, this program we use, it all costs money. So we appreciate you supporting us, and by supporting us, please make sure you support Uncommon Goods and any other sponsors that we have on this channel. Okay, so my takeaway: first off, I'm gonna start with the finale. As I just said at the top of the show, I really enjoyed the finale. Kept me on my toes. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was actually wrong. I said Jag was going to take uh, Matt and then lose. You said he was going to uh, cut Matt and then and then he was going to win. So we were we were both yeah. technically wrong. Bowie Jane uh, got the outs. I thought it was good. I, like you said, there was a reveal with Sari and Jared. There was some conversations where, as far as as far as how it went, first and foremost, the actual last part of the HOH where they went at it, mm-hmm. tiebreaker down to the numbers, awesome. like. Awesome. And then I really didn't know who he was going to take. There was like a nail biter there. It wasn't like a foregone conclusion. I didn't know if he was going to take Matt or Bowie Jane. He gave a great speech. He ends up taking Matt, which I will tell you, you really want to listen to the interview with Jag coming up because I believe him. I think he genuinely thought he was going to lose or was going to be very hard to win. Kind of similar to you Mm -hmm. where he knew he had problems going into that thing. And in spite of that, he did it. So that was really enlightening. Then he gets up there. We have the question and answer and portion of the jury you know section the questions were hard hitting they hit matt with a couple of questions they hit ja- uh, jag with some questions obviously jag crushed those questions matt did not he was not prepared for it then we get the surprise where jag decides you know what i just crushed these questions but now i'm going to insult each and every one of you in a, in a passively and i'm going to tell you that i'm the greatest player here and that you need you need to vote for me i thought he had cost himself the game at that point. Clearly, I was wrong. And then, you know, we have the ending of the game where Jag ends up winning and we get a surprise with Cam as America's favorite play- player. We talk about that with Cam. How you how does that really go down when you think about social media perception versus 
the television viewer perspective perspective of the of the players. It was uh, overall. I left. I left there fulfilled. I left the final finale episode fulfilled. I felt good about it. I think Jag's a great winner, a great representation. And I'm not even talking about the fact that he's um, for his cultural background and what he represents as the first sick winner. That that's great. It's amazing. But I just thought overall, uh, a super fan, someone who studied to get on there, prepared, played hard every day, in and out, and really, really cared about being the winner of Big Brother. It wasn't for followers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to win a game that he had loved for so many years. So it was a feel-good ending for me. I thought Cam's reaction was genuine. Um, So in the top three was very deserving. You had Sari and Matt. I thought all three of them brought something different to the game, all three deserving. I was happy with it. It was The season got boring. I think with any season that's 100 days, it always gets boring. Absolutely. But I will say that the finale to me delivered. Yeah, that was that was my take on the finale. Yeah, what about you? I'm gonna go since you kind of I, I agree with everything you did with the finale there. So I'm gonna give like kind of my overview of the season. Um, okay, and there was some I love the twist, even though you know I, I say it. It's like the the twist of Sari having her son in there, huge advantage. The same way I said when Paul came back and had the three weeks of or four weeks of safety. That's just like a really crazy advantage to have in the game. I thought the beginning part of it just really played out well. I thought the secret was really cool. I was really into it. It wasn't until like it started to become like almost like a steamroll. And then I was like, is this just how the season is going to roll? Like it's just going to be a steamroll until everybody started imploding each other, which I thought was made for great TV. Like the Heisem. Heisem might have been in the early phases. Like I was like watching him. I was like, oh God, like he was like annoying me in a sense. But then I missed him. I was like, man, he brought such good TV. And like he was easy to talk about. He gave us something to talk about, which was awesome. Um, Cam blowing up the game. Polarizing player. Polarizing player. And that's what we like, right? When we're watching these seasons, that's what makes it not boring. When it gets to the point of all the polarizing players being gone, like which is what happened this season, like Cam blew up the house and then Cam went home. So it was like we lost Heisum. We lost Cam. We lost Izzy. Izzy was a polarizing player. Like once those players were gone and then Corey went home, that's where the season for me just took a deep dive into like a snooze fest because we didn't have Corey to really compete and then nobody could compete with Jag in competition. Yeah, so it was like we were just ultimately watching like is Jag going to slip up in a comp and lose? And so I, – but overall I want to say – you know I know there was a, a good chunk of weeks where I was saying that the show was boring me. But I, I, after reflecting on it and the entirety, like there was a good six weeks, seven weeks where I was like fully into it. And the chaos of them flipping was exhausting to watch, but it was really entertaining because we never knew what we were going to get. And so with that, then there was the lull, then the finale being great. I definitely think I was a little harsh in that middle part. You know what I mean? It's just I was just getting bored and I was getting over it. But it was a well-rounded season. I do feel like it was a little bit too long. I think – Big Brother won't do. You know what I think is like the sweet spot is like that 85, 90 days. Like 85, 90 sweet spot. There's no reason to drag it out with length because then what they need to do in order to drag it out with length is constantly add battle backs, add twists, add a person being saved here, add somebody not going home here. They got to make sure it like drags out. And then for me, when they start throwing in too many twists on Big Brother, it kind of gets away from the game. The, the organic, natural game of Big Brother, which is a social experiment, competitions to save yourself, how are people interacting? And with all the twists, it becomes a little chaotic and I kind of like, it becomes sensory overload for me. So I'll ho- I hope in the future, they just kind of shorten it up a little bit, not as many twists and just let the game of Big Brother happen organically and see how it kind of, see how the trajectory of it goes. But I did agree that there needed to be some changes because it was starting to get stale. Like the big alliance gets together, runs through the game, it's boring, and then we have a winner. This season wasn't that. No. And it had good entertainment, but then it just turned into like, okay, when, is any is any big shots going to happen? Like, is Jag going to get targeted? And then he just, he just ran through it. So, But I agree with everything you said about the you know Jag. I'm happy that Jag was a winner. You know what I was thinking about just when, we, when you were saying that? You had last season with Taylor kind of going the underdog route and kind of talking about her story from playing and be going through all the adversity. Jag kind of went through some adversity but won some competitions. I would have loved to have seen Jag sitting next to a Taylor 
in a same season with the both those stories and see how it played out. You both, know, both great speakers too. Both great speakers. Jag kind of would come up there and be like, "All of you are in there because of me." Taylor would kind of come in there say her whole thing about, you know, she's the sword, not the shield. The sword, not the shield. That whole thing. And I would love to have seen how that played out. That would have been a wild finale if you could like yeah. pick those two up, drop them in the season. Yeah, I mean, Jag against Matt, no disrespect to Matt, he seems like a great dude, but he just wasn't ready for that level of, like, totally. intensity. You know, he just wasn't. And he's and, and Jag's a great speaker. Yeah, I agree with what you said. As far as the finale, for me, the big takeaway is you had the season of Suri in the first part, mm -hmm. and then you had this l little player by the name of Cameron who was basically an animal backed into a corner and said, I'm about to F this whole game up, and it's probably not going to result in me winning, but I'm going to be the Titanic right here where I'm going to clip this side of the ship and it's going to slowly sink. And by him going towards, he basically hit the middle of Cerise's ship, damaged it by going after Izzy. The fractures were there and they just could, kept expanding and Ceri couldn't put enough bandages and tape on that crack to seal it up before the water filled in and all of her people went home one by one. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really what changed the course of the game. If Cameron doesn't do what he did, I think it's very likely that Suri ends up winning this game. I think you're 100% right, yeah. Because Jag was on the way out. Now, Jag obviously was evicted and came back. And by the way, we asked him about that, so make sure you tune into it. We get straight up asked him, what does he think about that whole situation as far as is he a deserving winner or not? And uh, it's one of those things where if that doesn't happen and, and Jag doesn't get that second chance— Jag doesn't win this season, and if he no. doesn't win, I think it's Sari. I think Sari ends up going to the end. So in some ways, I will say about the twist, you mentioned it, I do think the twist was an advantage for Sari, but I also think it was a hindrance because when you go in there and play for yourself and you're only worried about yourself, you can be focused on the task at hand. But when you have this person on the right peripheral of you who you care about even more than yourself, yeah. now you're playing for two people. It's hard enough to play for one. Yeah. So now she's playing for two and then – Having him in there, I think, kind of maybe derailed her a little bit because he was doing things yes. that she wouldn't have necessarily done. She would have never so, done it, yeah. So she was putting out fires that should have never been started. And so I think coaching there's an like argument. Too. So she was yes. not only playing, she was coaching. Yes. She's, it's like, a, it's, like a, yeah. it's not the way she would do it. So I will say I do think with this season, competitions were a big factor. And she still, regardless of which way you slice it, wasn't able to win competitions. And I do think in the end, if she was able to get there against Jag, I don't know, maybe she gets to win. It's too much It's too much speculation. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's so I still think decide. Jag, with the competition wins, setting records, probably would have gotten the W, but it would have been interesting to see. But first half, Suri. Second half, Jag, kind of a combination of mm -hmm. Cam and Jag. Yeah. And then you had other players. Like you had Corey and you had America who were running things for maybe a week or two. They had some good ideas. So I think Corey, overall, um, I would like to see Corey back in like a couple of years when he like yeah. grows and matures a little bit and becomes more of like, you know, he was young. He, you could tell he was still finding himself. He was breaking out of his shell. And now I feel like he finally has broken out and I'd be eager to see now with this new character, like with himself, new confidence in himself, kind of like come back in a couple of years. I want to touch on something you just said about Cam too, which in the interview, he gives us this absolutely brilliant and it just showed his intelligence to be honest he answered about what he was noticing in the game and why he did what he did in that week and i'm very excited for everybody to kind of see what he said because it shows the brilliance and when you watch the interview with cam it you'll see how brilliant he actually was on a strategic and a game level yeah he was put in a was situation prepared. to be you know he was putting the situation back against the wall, compete, but but more than that, man, this guy was brilliant, and and I'm really eager and excited for people to get to see that side of him and and understand what was going through his head and how spot on he actually was. It's just yeah, wild. it was a great interview. But the, both interviews are about 30, 40 minutes each, yeah. so there's a lot to unpack there. We're going to get into it. We're going to be uh, putting those out over the next couple weeks. Uh, as far as Reindeer Games is concerned, uh, it's official. We're not going to be covering Reindeer Games. No. It's too short of a thing. The holidays are here. We've been working our asses off yeah. in our own jobs. And this is a big commitment. Big Brother was a long season. So we are going to be watching right along with you guys. Overall, it's an honor and a pleasure. I'll just speak for me first. You can you can wrap us up. It's an honor and a pleasure to cover this show. 
Uh, it's given so much to us and our families. Mm -hmm. And to still have you guys here week after week when we were doing the lives, thousands, 2,000 people watching with us live. It's I mean, wild. just to put that in context, we were getting 1,000, 2,000 people on our live. We only have about 40,000 subscribers. As of today, I just did a, a Crime Weekly. That's my other sh YouTube show. Um, we just did a live for a press conference and regarding a case we we helped solve. We only had 2,000 people on there. 230,000 subscribers, 2,000 people. We have 40,000 here, 2,000 people. Think about that. That's the dedication from you guys. Yeah. So I was doing that less. That wow, press that's conference really cool. Thinking, you didn't tell me that. That's awesome. No, it just happened. It that's literally crazy. just happened. And to think about the numbers, the percentage, that just goes to show you the devotion that you guys were there for us. And I had a lot of fun. The lives, honestly, for me personally, saved it because these recordings. Yeah. They're boring, man. They're boring just to recap it. I like the lives. I like the debates. I like we're debating some of you in the comments. Yeah, it was awesome. Gets me all fired up. But awesome. overall, for me, enjoyed the season. We still have the two uh, interviews that are going to come out, but they're pre-recorded. You'll they'll come out. But um, and we had overall, somebody had reach out to us. Too. We had somebody reach out to us, and there may be something we gotta we gotta we gotta have the um we have to have the conversation where we could may we might be able to get like a dial-in factor. Oof. And now that would be really wild. Yeah, kind of like an IG type thing. Like like dial in, voice it, and then now granted, you know, it would be done and hopefully it would be kept nice and <laughs> good conversations and not somebody coming in to like, you know, try to really go over the top. But Moving that would be something that would be cool. You know, we're always trying to push the needle. Like, you know, we had we had the live during the episodes. We did the interviews that we did live, which we didn't have access to that this year. Um but we're always trying to keep it innovative and keep it new and keep it fun for everybody that's watching. Because like Derek said, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. Because without you guys being here and that those the amount of you that come into the lives, we wouldn't be getting the ads. And then it's just it, – you guys really – this entire podcast is all thanks to everybody that tunes in every week, that comments, that subscribes, that shares our stuff. Like you guys really don't even know how much it means to us because we don't talk about it enough because we're only here once a week during the season. But it, we're only here because of you guys. So we love you guys and we appreciate you. Very early on. I don't even know if we announced it. I think I took a screenshot for you but very, and then we just got busy. But very early on this year, we passed over a million downloads. Yeah. And, you know, that's no easy feat. Like there's a lot of shows that I know, true crime shows that I go on for a couple of years before they hit their first million. We're well over a million now yeah. at this point between audio and video. Yeah. So, yeah, we appreciate it, guys. We appreciate the love and support. We will be we'll have two more episodes coming to you, one mm -hmm. each week, one at one interview with Jag. One interview with Cam, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you have your subscription notifications on. It was an absolute pleasure to cover this season. We hope everyone has a great holiday. Enjoy it with your family. Get off your phones. Get off your computers. Stop watching us. Get out there. Enjoy your time with your loved ones because that's the most precious moments, and you never know if you're going to lose that opportunity. So take advantage of it while you can. How's that? I love that. It's a great sound off. Everybody have an incredible holiday season. We're going to have it. Shout out to everybody that comes here. Hope you have a great new year, and we'll see you next time. Peace.